Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, NJ here. So today I'm trying out some new thermal paste uh, that has come highly recommended on the Steam Deck and before I uh, dive into quickly doing that, I thought uh, it'd be good to get some metrics. So uh, I'm running DCS, I've cranked the graphics, I've used a, a module that's um, pretty heavy on the system, uh, which is the Black Shark 3, the new uh, update to the, the Black Shark 2. Uh, in DCS so that will get things good and stressed. Um, this game normally runs absolutely spot on at 30 FPS um, but if you you know I've cranked everything up and I've put this uh, Black Shark 3 in here which is a lot heavier on things just to give us an idea of um, where it'll where it'll end up really cook the GPU and it looks like we're about 88 on the CPU and 85 on the GPU. Let me just unpause this for a second. Um, but yeah, you can see everything running really beautifully. I love playing DCS on the Steam Deck. It just all works really well. Um, and yeah, flying a helicopter with the Steam Deck controls. Who'd have thought? Totally doable. If you haven't already seen my video on setting up controls in DCS, I have two videos uh, that go through how to do so, how to get it working very nicely. Um, so I've been playing this now for about 15 minutes. I don't think it's going to get any hotter. Uh, this seems to be where we're pegged. You see the GPU's pegged, CPU's at about 27. Uh, so we're in the mid to upper 80s there in total. So uh, let's swap out for the th for the new thermal paste and see uh, if we can see any improvements. Okay, so back case off uh, this Steam Deck. This was actually um, a fairly new one. I've actually I've got two decks. Uh, this one's fairly new. I did notice that they've uh, Valve have now added this foam uh, on the back of the fan which started out life as a, uh, a user fix and it was specifically for the delta fans interestingly to keep them a little bit quieter I didn't know really think you needed this for these uh, updated fans um, the not the non delta model that's uh, way quieter um, but I guess they thought why take any chances and they've added that anyway it's interesting to see as the revisions have gone on in hardware little things they've updated I know they certainly updated the joysticks um, it wasn't even where well, it was a fair while ago now because um, I did have a set of the ghillie kit all sensor joysticks but of course um, those will need to be revised now because the new hardware means that um, the capacitive touch won't work on those uh, and I rely on the capacitive touch so I'm sticking with the stock ones on this one uh, for now anyway um, you should know how to take this off there's loads of videos on how to do it it's basically eight screws and then you have to very carefully um, just snap these little plastic retaining lugs out and then the whole thing will come come away once you've done it a few times you won't be scared of it in fact you'll, you'll do it in seconds um, so that's the main thing you have to lift up this um, little bit of aluminium foil here you've got a screw there we need to undo and we've got this guy up in the top corner and this guy down here. So let's get those done next. Okay, that's that done. And then lift this off carefully because there's a load of thermal pads holding that down. There we go. That's what we're looking at. So this is a very important one by the way that's the charge controller uh, thermal pad sometimes that can well that can come away don't make sure that these are all in their correct places uh some what you see this one's actually stayed stuck onto the uh the top of the um apu there uh which is fine just just be very careful when you take this off and on you don't want these moving or uh, and you certainly don't want any of these being lost um because they're all spreading the uh the, using this shield essentially as a heat spreader um so that's now out of the way uh to get to the underside of this now so that we can actually change the paste out we've got a further two screws to undo here this one this one and then the last thing that's holding it down is just this kind of black sticker here um that is really there just to make sure that no kind of expelled heat comes up through here that really helps contain the directed airflow through the uh fin array there that will then uh, the heat sink fins that will then obviously um keep things nice and cool um but it is just a sticker so you can just you know lift up whichever side is making the least contact it looks for me like the least contact is probably on the fan side so i'm going to lift it there uh, very gently with a knife uh, so let's get those bits done
So the best way to get this off of here, you can see you've got a little lug here. You can actually lift from there and lift from the underside of this very gently and you'll actually pull away at that sticker um, and hopefully with a bit of luck, nice and gently. There we go. Um, so that saves you kind of peeling or bending the sticker. Um, that's probably the easiest way to get this off. And if we flip this over now, you can see we've got the uh, thermal paste, the residue from the original thermal paste on there. Um, so we're going to clean that off with some cotton buds and some paper towel, um, very carefully of course, and use some uh, nice high alcohol grade isopropyl, like 98% isopropyl or higher is good really. Something that will evaporate, safe to use on electronics. We're going to clean that off of the back of the heatsink and off of the APU itself before we put the new stuff on. One thing I've noticed as I've cleaned this stuff off is the thermal paste that Valve used. Um, it's very thick, um, which is by design. Um, they don't use a thinner paste. They don't want something that's going to suffer from pump out. Uh, so things like Arctic's MX-5, if you've got that laying around a drawer, don't swap it for that. That stuff will maybe give you good initial results, but it will get poor again pretty quickly and you'll have to redo the paste a lot more often. Um, so the stuff that seems to be unanimously recommended um, which doesn't suffer from pump out and it's nice and thick similar kind of stuff to the OEM uh, is this stuff which is uh, the thermal right TFX um, really good results from what I've seen on this stuff so we're going to give this a go uh, very similar to Valve's own stuff but yeah Valve stuff has dried out it's got a bit crusty in places but yeah we'll see if we get um, an improvement with the new stuff Okay, so that's all nicely cleaned up now. Um, use plenty of alcohol and cotton swabs to get that done. That's ready for uh, thermal pasting now. I definitely think it's uh, a pretty cool thing if I zoom in here as well, just to show you if we can get that to work with this camera. But just seeing Valve written on a chip, never thought I'd see that day. That's so cool. There's that custom APU. Fantastic. So that's all cleaned up and ready to go now. Uh, next thing to do is get on with applying the thermal paste. Now, of course, there is the great debate of how to apply thermal paste. Uh, I've done this to many CPUs over at least a couple of decades now and uh, I've never had any problems. So try not to judge me too much. What I can tell you is um, with most uh, CPUs, the heat spreader, the, the shield on top, um, is actually spreading out the heat from the very center. Um, now, um, you can, you know, if you know anything about de-lidding CPUs, you'll, you'll know exactly how that works. Um, so it's obviously very important to make sure that you have plenty of thermal paste right in the middle, um, which is why a lot of people with CPU certainly will stick with the P size method, put a blob in the middle. Some will do an X with the idea that as you squash it down, the X will move from the center out and fill and push out any air gaps, etc. Um, with GPUs, it's a different thing. You wanna make sure you get every little millimeter, every nanometer of this thing covered in um, paste. So you would actually spread it with a, a spreader like this. This comes in the kit with the, uh, the thermal right stuff. Um, so I'm gonna treat it like that as this is an APU. Um, I don't actually know how this heat spread is working or whether you need the whole thing covered, but I'm just not gonna take a risk. I'm gonna spread this as evenly as I can. Um, and then once it's actually squashed down, it will be absolutely fine. So it doesn't need to look terribly pretty, but you do need to make sure that you don't overspread it. So loads of it doesn't ooze out the sides. Um, in the same way you don't wanna underspread it, you wanna get everything covered um, and just make sure um, that we don't leave any silver, silver exposed from this, uh, this spreader. So let's get on with that. Yeah, this stuff is really thick. <clears throat> I'm actually gonna put a little bit on here. Okay, that will do. Um, this will get flattened out a lot more under some compression. Um, as I said, this is definitely the thickest stuff I've ever worked with. Definitely more fiddly to apply 
Um, I don't need my camera to focus on that. Actually, the print's slightly blurred, that's why. Um, yeah, definitely the thickest stuff I've ever applied. Um, and we'll see how it does. Um, but let's start reassembling things. So uh, let's first of all get this um, cooler back in place. This copper heat pipe. So we're going to very carefully place this down. And we want to try and get this as over the screws as possible here. So with that aligned, I'm just going to give this a little bit of movement as I press down, just so all that seats nicely. Uh, and then this screw, which is actually retained, I'm pretty sure, that, that one there, that doesn't actually come away from this part. Um, if we reverse out of it first, you can you hear that clicking? That's the uh, threads lining up. So I do that first. I'm going to go in a little bit, and then the rest of this I'm going to do by hand. Don't want to screw it up too much here. So that's the first one done. And then the one we took out earlier is from this uh, lower corner here. We're going to do the same thing. We're just going to back out until we, until we hear that clicking. We know we're thread lined up. And then I'm just going to do the rest of this by hand. I don't want to over tighten it. And then that feels pretty cinched down. Don't overdo it and strip threads. Doesn't need tons of pressure. Just enough to make sure it's uh, nicely captive. And of course this one is uh, one of the mounting screws when you put the, uh, the plate back on um, the uh, heat shield, the spreader. So that will be next. I'm just also going to make sure that that is uh, stuck back down to the fan which it is, that all feels good, everything feels flat. Um, and then we can now put this back on. When you put this shield back on, make sure that this lip here does go under these wires, because otherwise it'll end up pushing this up and you'll end up pressing metal onto bare, well, not bare wires, but thinly insulated wires, which is uh, never a good thing. So I'm just gonna make sure those are under uh, okay, make sure that's nicely lined up and then going straight down with the rest of it on top. Um, you don't want to push that down and slide this around because remember those uh, thermal pads are all nicely lined up. So with that done, the next thing to do will be to put on, where is the screw? Here we go. It wasn't a case screw, of course, it's the one for the shield. Okay, and that feels pretty good. Push this uh, aluminium tape back down. Uh, let's zoom out a bit now. Um, and then the next thing I'm going to do is just check uh, by looking down. You can actually see that's all nice and flat and flush. If there's any lumps there, you might be trapping something. So be a little careful when you do that. Um, next, we need... The small screws for the corners of this uh, heat shield. So one in there again, same technique. We're going to back out slightly so we hear the clicking, and then we can go in, finish tightening it by hand. We're going to do the same with the one on the top left corner of the shield as well. And we just tighten that by hand. And that's us down and looking good. Just going to have a quick visual inspection. That, that all seems to be pretty decent. Happy with that. And then the last one will go down when the case screws on. But yeah, everything's good there now. Right, time to put the back case on, screw it together, and then have a look at some results. Okay, so far, so good. Let's have a uh, look at the temperatures. Let's get the performance overlay up in steam. So 
So far, so good. Looks like things are finished loading up in the 40s, low 40s for idle. Happy with that. So it looks like things are working and cooling as they should. So the next thing to do, let's uh, fire up DCS and repeat that test that we did earlier. Got the black shark fired up. Um, let's go for a little. Uh, let's go for a little fly and see how we do. Uh, and for those of you that are wondering how I'm getting this to work, I've actually got the trimmer on one of the back buttons because the trimmer is very important in this helicopter. Uh, so once I'm trimmed, let go of the back button, centre the controls, and we're in a pretty good position. Okay, let's let's head off a little bit of right rudder here. Yeah, I need to add some curves to the rudder pedal. That's a little bit hot. Um, obviously, the steam deck controls a very short throw, so uh, adding curvature and a little bit of dead zone really helps uh, get them feeling really nice. So we are GPU pegged, and we are so far. A decent amount under where we were temperature wise and uh, a few frames higher as well so that is looking very promising um, I'm going to do a little bit more flying try and heat soak this and see where this thing settles Well, I think this is definitely a good result. Um, we're definitely running cooler than we were before. Um, so yeah, I think the next thing I'll do is continue to play. And uh, if there's any adverse rise in temperature, I'll drop it in the comments. I don't see it changing much, to be honest with you. Um, we've definitely had a gain. Um, got lower temperatures for sure, which is a good thing. So the fan's slightly quieter, which is also a good thing. Um, which will help with battery life um, and yeah I'll uh, report back in um, maybe a couple of weeks and see see how we get on. So far I can uh, definitely recommend the use of this stuff the Thermal Right TFX uh, as I said it's been very highly praised stuff anyway but as I mentioned as you saw very thick stuff hard to apply uh, you have to be very patient applying it um, so take your time and I think uh, worthwhile doing. Hope you enjoyed that catch you soon guys.